Welcome back to our question of the week. Let's move right into the question. Today we're going to hide our answer choices until we read the full question and deduce some sort of an answer. And as always, we're going to begin with the last sentence or the question of the vignette before we read the rest. Which of the following is a potential complication of this treatment? This tells me that all I'm looking for is what the treatment is, and the rest I probably don't have to pay much attention to. But let's go ahead and read the question. A 30-year-old patient comes to the physician due to a bump in her neck. Physical examination reveals a solitary thyroid nodule. Laboratory studies show an increased serum calcitonin level and a pentagastrin-induced rise in the secretion of calcitonin. A biopsy confirms the presence of a carcinoma. The patient is scheduled for a total thyroidectomy, which is the following is a potential complication of this treatment. So we're telling, being told that the patient will be having a total thyroidectomy. Sometimes these questions may not give you the choice that they're having a to total thyroidectomy. They may have you deduce that the total thyroidectomy is occurring, and then you have to find out what the complications of the treatment is. So you can't just ignore everything. But in this case, we're told there's a total thyroidectomy. What are some potential complications with a total thyroidectomy? Well, we know there are nerves that run alongside and uh, close to the thyroid. Uh, so if we do a thyroidectomy, we can lacerate some of those nerves. I know the parathyroids sit around the nerve of, around the thyroid as well, uh, and some other structures in that area, muscles and whatnot. So let's remember those things, and we'll take that into consideration as we check our answer choices. All right, A is acromegaly, B is cretinism or cretinism, C is hypertension, D, hypoparathyroidism, or E, renal osteodystrophy. Take a minute, come up with your answer, and write your answer in the comments below. Well, right from the start, I'm seeing uh, D as a potential answer here because we mentioned parathyroid as we were working through this question. But let's go through and uh, try and eliminate some of these options. So let's start at the top. A, acromegaly. Acromegaly, this is an excess of growth hormone, uh, mostly going to be in, in, in adults. Their growth plates have already fused. Um, there's no association with a thyroid or uh, a thyroidectomy in this situation. So acromegaly, I know, is not going to be my correct answer. So we'll mark that off the list. Cretinism. Cretinism is, it is a hypothyroidism, but it's a hypothyroidism of a fetus. Okay, this is going to be due to problems with the, the um, thyroid functioning and the thyroid um, developing. It's not going to be something a 30-year-old patient will find uh, due to a cancer. So cretinism to me is not going to be a good option here as well. C, hypertension. While we know hypertension can be caused by a lot of things, taking a thyroid out is not going to be a cause of, of hypertension, so that's a bad answer. Let's skip over D for just a minute and go to E. Renal osteodystrophy. So renal osteodystrophy comes along with patients that have renal failure. We can see a lot of the signs that are associated with something that could have been caused by removing the thyroid, but I don't really think we're going to have a lot of issues with this being caused by removing the thyroid. So in turn, my answer is going to be D, hypoparathyroidism. And that is our correct answer, D. So what we're seeing here is the parathyroids sit on top of the thyroid. So if we're removing the thyroid gland, you have to be very, very careful to not remove the parathyroids, and oftentimes it's still pretty and almost impossible to do that. Um, so we do have a potential to have a secondary hypoparathyroidism due to that total thyroidectomy. What will be some signs and symptoms that we'll see the patient uh, having when they have that total thyroidectomy that affects the parathyroids? Well, hypoparathyroid can lead us to hypocalcemia, and then on top of that, we can have hyperphosphatemia. So what is the hypocalcemia symptoms? Tingling in the lips, tingling in the fingers, muscle spasms, 
Uh, they can have a positive chopstick sign. So if we tap on the facial nerve in the cheek, that will cause contraction of the facial muscles. And they can also have a positive trousseau sign, which is when you occlude the brachial artery in the upper part of the arm, it's going to cause a carpal spasm down in the distal portion of the arm. Now, as we mentioned, renal osteodystrophy, that can give us some signs and symptoms that would be similar to hypoparathyroidism. However, this is a completely different mechanism that's causing this hypoparathyroid signs and symptoms. It's not due to the actual removal of the thyroid. Okay. Um, 